You're watching News 25. Local coverage you can count on. News 25 is brought to you by J.K. Nelson Law. Voted best of Harump for four years. Give them a call, 775-727-9900. News 25 is also brought to you by Gunny's Air Conditioning and Heating. New, service, and repair. Call Gunny's, 775-727-6800. Hello and welcome to this edition of News 25. I'm Yunette Gentry. It is Tuesday, the first day of August. Well, a 12-year-old unfortunately passed away because two vehicles were driving recklessly. Rory Rossell gives us the details on that girl's life. A 12-year-old girl who was killed by a hit-and-run driver that swerved up on the sidewalk in North Las Vegas has now been identified. Yolina Tarango died at the scene at 3.40 p.m. during the Tuesday crash in Clark County. According to North Las Vegas Police, a 2005 Cadillac Escalade and a 2010 Chevy Camaro were recklessly driving north on Belmont Street toward East Cary Avenue in Las Vegas when the Cadillac ran a stoplight and crashed into a pickup truck. The Cadillac kept going and hit another vehicle before losing control and hitting Tarango, who was on the sidewalk. Two other people suffered injuries, but they were not life-threatening. The Cadillac driver ran off and he has not been arrested yet, police confirmed. At this time, the driver of the Cadillac Escalade is still outstanding, says the North Las Vegas Police Department Public Information's office. Police say they were following up on several investigative leads during this ongoing investigation. The driver of the Chevy Camaro, however, has been arrested and was arrested at the scene. Police identified him as Alfredo Carbonara, age 19. He faces a felony charge of reckless driving, resulting in death. Carbonara was booked into the North Las Vegas Community Correctional Center on Tuesday, police said. The Nye County Sheriff's Office releases additional details on a murder that took place on Facebook Live. The Nye County Sheriff's Office deputies quickly reacted to a murder after a caller across the country notified them of a man that she allegedly knows posting a disturbing video on Facebook last Wednesday afternoon. She contacted the Sheriff's Office because she saw his Facebook Live, which appeared to be a woman rolling around a pool of blood and it allegedly looked like she had been stabbed. The caller identified the owner of the Facebook account as Mark Mekikoff, age 39. The caller reported the video to the Nye County Sheriff's Office because Mekikoff was arrested by deputies on July 14th and was facing charges of possession of a stolen vehicle and possession of a controlled substance, though he was released on July 20th. The Nye County Sheriff's Office received Mekikoff's name and phone number from the caller, which allowed deputies to ping his phone. The caller thought that he would still be at the location, but after pinging his phone, that was determined that he was not in Nye County and that he was in San Mateo. The Nye County Sheriff's Office contacted the San Mateo Police Department at that time. A program called Prepared Live allowed the caller to share a screen recording of the video on Facebook with him. The technology is utilized by the Nye County Sheriff's Office. Dispatch sends a link via text to the person, and if the person clicks on the link, the office can access the camera for the live stream. It also allows a person to text or share another multimedia from their phone with the office. Officials say that it took about 15 minutes to gather all of the information before notifying San Mateo Police Department, giving them the video that was provided to the Nye County Sheriff's Office. From the reporting person, a picture of the suspect and his last known location when it comes to the residence. San Mateo Police responded to an apartment complex where the cell phone pinged. The officers started knocking on the doors at the apartment building because they did not have the apartment number specifically. Officials at the San Mateo Police Department say they located the victim's apartment after about three hours. San Mateo Police said officers tracked Mekikoff to San Jose and found him in a car along with a suspected murder weapon. He is now facing charges of homicide. The Nye County Sheriff, Joe McGill, praised the diligence of the Nye County Sheriff's Office staff and others who responded quickly to the call. If it were not for their actions, he questions how long San Mateo Police would have not known about this murder. The York Fire 
on the edge of California and Nevada's state line is now more than 80,000 acres, with little more than 20% contained, according to fire officials. Travelers and residents in Las Vegas are evacuating and rescheduling flights due to that fire. Mikey Ruhan has this story. The York fire that is burning across California and Nevada has grown to more than 80,000 acres. The National Park Service reported Tuesday morning that the fire was estimated at 80,437 acres with 23% containment. In an incident overview, the Park Service said there was fairly deep monsoonal moisture that worked into the area, bringing higher relative humidity that slowed fire progression and fire behavior. There was also a heavy downpour for about 15 minutes in the early morning hours on Tuesday. There was also some light precipitation, and officials expect the moisture to continue through Tuesday. Full containment is now anticipated by Monday, August 14th. Smoke from the fire is reaching into Nevada and southern Utah. For current smoke impacts and for tips managing your exposure to wildfire smoke, visit airnow.gov. In national news, two new bills aimed at cracking down on drug trafficking into the U.S. are now passed by the Senate. R.J. Camacho gives us that information. On July 28th, it was announced that two bipartisan bills aimed at cracking down on illegal fentanyl trafficking into the United States has passed the Senate. These two bills, both the Eradicate Narcotic Drugs Act and the Formulating Effective New Tools to Address National Yearly Losses of Lives Act, both introduced by Senator Jackie Rosen, aim to aid in ending drug smuggling by requiring the Commissioner of U.S. Customs and Border Protection to regularly update its drug interdiction guidance. Drug interdiction meaning to prevent illicit drugs from reaching their destination. It's been reported that U.S. Customs and Border Protection policies are outdated in terms of outlining drug interdiction. It's also been reported that they do not provide guidance on how to handle drugs such as fentanyl. Both acts recently mentioned, the Eradicate Narcotic Drugs Act and the Formulating Effective New Tools to Address National Yearly Losses of Lives Act, would also require the president to sanction drug rings involved in international drug trafficking. Senator Rosen was quoted stating, Stopping the flow of deadly fentanyl into Nevada starts by strengthening the resources that law enforcement has to prevent drugs at our border and by targeting international traffickers and criminal networks. And don't grab that remote. We're telling you about the latest on a former Raiders case in court when News 25 returns. You're watching News 25, local coverage you can count on. Welcome back to News 25. Well, former Las Vegas Raiders football player Damon Arnett appears in court on his plea deal agreement following charges from 2022. Former Las Vegas Raiders player Damon Arnett has reached a plea agreement after he was charged with assault for an incident at a Las Vegas resort last year. Court records show that the plea was entered on Friday, July 28th, and Arnett's attorney, Ross Goodman, says that he will plead guilty to two lesser charges of assault and drawing a deadly weapon. Under the agreement, Arnett will pay a $2,000 fine and serve 50 hours of community service, according to Goodman. A court hearing is scheduled for Wednesday morning for Arnett to enter his plea. A grand jury in May indicted Arnett for assault with a deadly weapon and carrying a concealed weapon, stemming from the incident at the Park MGM in January of 2022. He pleaded not guilty to those counts later in the month of January last year. Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department alleged that Arnett had a gun during an argument with the valet attendants, according to an arrest report. The manager came over and took the keys, and as the attendant was walking away, he said he heard what believed to be the sound of a gun cocking. Though Arnett told police that he had the gun in his waistband and he put it in the driver's side door during the argument, but he denied taking it out from the door. Goodman also argued that during a surveillance video, it showed Arnett keeping the gun inside of the car. Arnett will be returning to court tomorrow morning, August 2nd. 
And in today's health news you can use, News 25 is speaking with Stephen Schaefer, who's telling us about a new urgent care facility here in Pahrump that will provide high quality service, and it's scheduled to open soon. Well, we're just here at the open house here for the Optimum Urgent Care. Uh, we're not open for business yet, but just having our kickoff open house so that uh, the folks in Pahrump here can come see what we're doing and what we're so excited about. Uh, I'm a local. I just moved into Mountain Falls, the Ovation 55 and over community. And talking to folks there, we see that <clears throat> we get the re recurring opinion or sentiment that Pahrump could really benefit from really three things in their health care, quality, access, and service. And so with our quality, we, uh, we have uh, very highly trained doctors and nurses that are from an ER environment. We have uh, paramedics and EMTs. Uh, even the front office people are certified medical assistants that can help. We're here to provide a high quality service. We'll be open seven days a week from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m and uh, opening soon, hopefully around the middle of August. And the, the company has a, a very strong focus on customer service or friendliness. So we're here to actually put a, a, a good foot forward, build the brand, build your trust, and just happy to be here. We uh, have a great, great uh, turnout here. And uh, we're trying to use a lot of local builders and, and suppliers. We have. Uh, Leo from uh, Carmelo's Bistro uh, providing the catering. Um, Frank at Wild Wild West provided the flooring. Um, so we're, we're trying to use a lot of local folks and we're just really happy to be here and hopefully make a difference in the advancement of healthcare in this community. This will be a walk-in clinic so no appointment is necessary. We'll be treating everything from sports injuries, work injuries, motor vehicle accidents, uh, sicknesses. Um, we know under we understand there's a lot of um, retirement uh, age people in the area with different sets of health problems, respiratory included. So we're very excited to be able to see those patients and offer all those services. The other thing I wanted to emphasize is that we're not in competition with the local physicians and private practices. We would actually like to be an extension of those practices. Uh, so. If a patient can't get in to see their doctor that day because they're full but need to be seen quickly, uh, we're hoping that they come here and we'll see the patient. We'll send the medical records back to the doctor's office and if the patient needs follow-up, we'll ask them to go back and follow up with their primary care doctor. So that way, if the patients can't see the doctor that day or needing to in the evenings, the weekends, we're hoping it to be an extension of their practice and definitely not a competitor. It'll be a great co collaboration. Well, new month, new rules. So we're here to inform you that street impact fees here in Pahrump are increasing as of today, August 1st. Starting today, August 1st, street impact fees will increase on new commercial and residential development in the Pahrump service area to strengthen the purchase power of public works. For materials, to improve the road, impact fees are charges assessed for the impact that new development has on the town of Pahrump Streets. Street impact fees shall be spent on street projects and not on capital improvements or facility expansions that are not street projects. For more information, contact Public Works at 775-751-6262. Well, parents are getting ready for back to school for their little ones, but we have some information for parents with toddlers that's of use for everyone right after this break. You're watching News 25. Local coverage you can count on. News 25 is brought to you by Mountain West Lawyer, Injury Attorneys, 727-9500. Welcome back. Well, Baby's Bounty is set to hold diaper banks all across Nevada. Baby's Bounty is hosting diaper banks across Nevada in the month of August. Families can receive a week's supply of diapers 
and wipes for up to three children at each diaper bank. Registration is required for Henderson, Las Vegas, and North Las Vegas banks. Registration opens one week before each bank. Locations and dates include Henderson, Wednesday, August 2nd, 9 a.m. to noon, North Las Vegas, Wednesday, August 9th, 9 a.m. to noon, Pahrump, Friday, August 11th, 10 a.m. to noon, Las Vegas, Wednesday, August 16th, 9 a.m. to noon. For more information, visit babiesbounty.org. All right. Well, if you're a pet lover like me, stay tuned because Pat Lemming from Never Forgotten Animal Society is here to tell us all about a big, lovable dog named Davida. Today's Rescue a Pet segment is brought to you by Realty Executives in Action. Put the team at Realty Executives in action for you. Hi everyone, this is Pat with Never Forgotten Animal Society at 3091 North David Street in the north part of Pahrump off of Bell Vista. With me today is probably one of the sweetest souls you'll ever meet. Her name is Davida and she's approximately, we think, maybe one to possibly two years old. She was found running here in Pahrump and uh, she is just the biggest baby, baby teddy bear you've ever met. Uh, she loves people, she loves being around people, she loves interacting with people. She gives you hugs all six feet of her. Um, when she's happy, she just wants to be in your lap, which could be a little awkward sometimes. But um, for the most part, she just really is a very, very sweet, loving girl um, who <laughs> would like to be in a very good home. She is going to need some space. Um, she is going to need room to run. So if you have a fence yard that you can put her in that is going to be big enough for her to run in, that would be the best possible scenario for her. She cannot be cooped up in a small quarters. She has to have open area and she has to be able to run. Um, she didn't know how to play when she came in, but since she's been here, we take her out in the yard every day and we play and she hasn't quite learned how to fetch yet, but she's, she's at least learning to go get it. She just hasn't really realized that she can bring it back to you at any given point in time. Um, but very, very sweet, loving girl, biggest teddy bear you've ever met. Uh, her adoption fee is $250. She has been spayed. She's got all of her shots, including rabies, um, and she has a microchip. So if you're interested in Davida, she is here at Never Forgotten Animal Society at 3091 North David Street. Uh, we're open Monday through Saturday from 10 until 5. No appointments are necessary, so please come on in um, and meet all of our animals. We have, right now, we have um, 18 dogs. Um, we've got five puppies, we've got almost 100 kittens, and we've got uh, at least 20 adult cats. So if you're in the market for any of these animals, please come on by and take a look. No appointment necessary. Our number is 775-537-8674 and come and meet this very, very sweet, loving girl. Her name is Davida. So come on by. We look forward to meeting you. News 25 Weather Cam is brought to you by Lerner and Rowe Injury Attorney's Office in Pahrump. In a wreck, need a check? Call 702-877-1500. Well, here is a double rainbow outside looking through our Lerner and Rowe Weather Cam and we have scattered showers between Las Vegas and Pahrump and flood warnings in surrounding areas. A closer look at our stormy forecast. News 25 weather is brought to you by Dairy Council of Nevada. Undeniably delicious, undeniably dairy. Enjoy what's real. Hi, good evening, Nevada. It's John Kohler from the KPVM Channel 25 Weather Studios all up and down the East Country Radio Network and worldwide on the local BTV app, the app that's so good for you, it's like a vitamin. 93 degrees out there in Fernley, Fallon saw 94, Carson City all the way up to 91. Good golly, you didn't quite uh, make the Cool Spot Award winner today, though, did you? That was 82 degrees out in Tonopah. You also cool in Tonopah. Congratulations. 84 in Goldfield. We saw 95 up in Beatty. 101 degrees out in Amargosa, still at the triple digits and still the hot spot 
out in Las Vegas feeling pretty good poolside at 96 degrees and then Death Valley terrible at 111 degrees but a uh, special caveat ding 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 Las Vegas you win an award for the hottest July on record that's right you got 97 plus degrees average temperatures in July last time it got any, anywhere near that hot was 13 years ago so uh, you're doing uh, record-breaking work today Las Vegas congratulations here in the paradise of Brump let's take a look our current temperature 93 degrees very nice 95 just a little bit earlier South southeasterly winds tempering the uh, heated festivities somewhat at uh, 12 miles per hour. The sun rose this morning at 5.50 and at Sunday this evening, look for it to go away at 7.49. Going to be uh, partly cloudy skies tonight as the sun sets. Gorgeous colors up there as we head to our low of 78 degrees. Beautiful sky watching tonight. So um, enjoy that as we head on into the rest of the week. We got uh, clouds tomorrow, maybe even some rain. And then the rest of the week, well, look at this. It's uh, 10 mile per hour winds. Temperatures hovering right around triple digits and uh, getting all the way up to excessive heat warning levels Sunday and Monday, but uh, returning to uh, form on Tuesday at 103 degrees. Pretty hot week, but not uh, super, super hot. So that, I guess that's a trend in the right direction. We kind of like that. And a little bit of rain to throw in the mix. Not too bad. All right, back to the desk. Here's you, Net. Thanks so much, John. Yeah, we'll take that. More clouds tomorrow, but the sun comes out just in time for the weekend. Well, that does it for this edition of News 25. From all of us here at Ace Country Radio and News 25, thanks so much for joining in, and we'll see you on the air next newscast. Good night.